to the ONTV Fantasy Football Podcast. That's Joe Johnson. I'm Joey Tysick, and we are the hosts for today's episode. No special guests. Week 13 is over. Final week of the regular season coming up this week. Hard to believe. Yeah, I, I don't even... It doesn't seem real that the football season's already honestly coming to a close. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it really went by in the blink of an eye. Uh, it, it's shocking that uh, not only in fantasy, but, you know, in, in the NFL, like, right. you know, Christmas is around the corner and mm-hmm. things are going to be wrapping up soon. Yeah, we're going to have, like, actual NFL playoffs. Not a, not only the fantasy playoffs, but that leads into the actual NFL playoffs. And it's, yeah. It's kind of crazy. So how was your uh, Week 13 experience, Joe? Well, good news and bad news. Uh, I scored the most amount of points I've scored all season long, which is the good news. Nice. The bad news is is that it wasn't enough to beat a couple of teams who went off yeah, this week. There was a lot of scoring. Luckily, you know, I got the uh, punching bag of our league this week, so I didn't have to put up a ton of points. Um, and, but it did give me, uh, optimism to know that my team, uh, despite one of my players, we'll get into it in a moment, uh, but one of my players got a big zero, Mm -hmm. uh, but despite getting a zero from one of my players, uh, I still scored the most points I have all, all season. So that, that makes me optimistic that my team is on fire right now. Yeah. And unfortunately it was another week of big injuries too. It's kind of been the notable thing the last few weeks. For some reason, they keep happening to my teams, but um, there there were more than just my team this week, um, so I wasn't the only one. But, uh, but yeah, I think this season is going to be looked back at in the future as the the season with so many notable injuries, like yeah. major in, injuries, especially to quarterback. I was going to say the starting quarterback position. Now, luckily, it, it hasn't been like the top echelon of quarterbacks, but a lot of those like middle tier guys that were getting you like solid outings yeah. for the most part. And it forces you to scramble and uh, hit the waiver wire. Um, and in our league, you know, it's it's true uh, quarterback. So mm-hmm. you don't automatically get the backup. And I yeah. I kind of got, got burned when, uh, uh, oh, no, I, no I, I, I had cousins in another league. And luckily that's a, that's a, a team quarterback. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but I thought I was going to be getting the other backup and yeah. dropped them. And then Dobbs came in and started playing pretty well. So, um, but yeah, when you have a true, uh, you know, quarterback where you don't automatically get the team quarterback backup, when you lose that play or someone could swoop in and take his backup and you're scrambling. Yeah. Now, again, luckily in a 10 team league, it doesn't matter as much as it would in like a bigger league. Um, because there's just so many quarterbacks out there, but it is something that, at least in this season, where there's been so many quarterback injuries, it, yeah. it starts to dilute the pool uh, big time. So You know, and that might be an argument of on draft day. You know, you go after the guy that you want, um, but maybe not get just a one-week by week fill-in because you never know what's going to happen. So yeah. you might want a, a, you know, if you're starting guys a tier one, you might want a tier two as a backup. Right. But then that brings up the issue of, you know, whoever you start gets outscored by your bench. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, it it's just it's unfun either way to have to worry about that kind of stuff. So hopefully the injuries will slow down to at least end the season, especially in the fantasy playoffs. I don't wish that upon anybody. Now, you were in a high scoring game this week. Yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> I'm the first game that we're talking about this week and not for a good reason uh, to myself. Wow. Um, Malik back to his uh, his winning ways after he lost one week last week. Is that the highest uh, amount of points any one team has put up this season? That's uh, that's way up there. One seventy three. No, no, because there was that one week where Malik put up, I think, two hundred. Oh, did he? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so his team has been known to go crazy at times. Um, and man, the thing that is just wild is like a lot of these guys I thought were gonna um have rough weeks. Trevor Lawrence hasn't been super good all season. Uh, last couple games, he's put it together. So Malik had to uh, put in a bye week fill in because he normally has Josh Allen and uh, Trevor Lawrence did fine, even though he did get hurt. Yeah. Um, but it's not Malik's main guy. Jamar chase with backup. Jake Browning went completely nuclear. He had 11 catches for 149 yards and a touchdown. CD lamb continues to have his 
arguably best season of his career, young career so far, um, which is going to push him up draft boards, I think, next year. Travis Etienne had another good game after he was kind of banged up going into the game. They didn't even know if he was going to play. Yeah. Um, and he played, got a touchdown, didn't do a ton with it, but, you know, got in the end zone. And then Isaiah Pacheco was fantastic on Sunday night, 110 yards and a touchdown. George yeah. Kittle continues to be, you know, George Kittle. And then DeAndre Hopkins had another uh, good touchdown game. So Malik just getting production all around from his team. Uh, meanwhile, uh, myself, uh, Kyler Murray had a bad game. Uh, Tank Dell got hurt early in the game, which was a big a big hit to multiple of my, uh, of my fantasy teams. That's brutal when it happens early, and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, so he's going to be out for the rest of the season, uh, which just stinks as he was one of the emerging rookies um, on this Texans offense, which was fun to watch. Was it a, a fracture? Was it a, was uh, yeah, it a break? I, I believe so. I'll, I'll click the notes real quick just to remind myself. Oh, that's just heartbreaking. Uh, yeah, he he broke his left fibula, which is Man. not not fun. You know, and that's just – if you're just a fan of football, it, I hate seeing that because yeah. here's this young guy coming in, making a difference in this league and mm -hmm. um, having fun out there and, and turning Houston into a contender and then something like this happens. I, I hate seeing it. It's bad for the game. Yeah, especially when, like, the last few years we've just been littered with rookie wide receiver talent with Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, Garrett Wilson, Chris – like, just – countless guys that have been stepping up and tank Dell was kind of that hidden gem this year, which was exciting to watch to So to see him end his season early, uh, really stinks. Yeah. And, and, you know, we were talking about it earlier. It was a play he probably should not have yes. been in on. Yeah. You know, if you're going to do a, a quarterback sneak or a one yard tush push or whatever, why is he out there? Right. Yeah. You get hurt on a meaningless play that he's not involved in. Yeah. Especially when he's one of the smaller wide receivers out in the, in the league in general, uh, he's more of a speedster, route runner. Uh, so for him to be in there just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Um, the rest of my team is kind of in shambles, to say the least. Now McCaffrey, you know, he he's McCaffrey. He's the best in the business. Uh, Rashad White is putting a, a very good season together, which has been surprising after he had a really slow start to the season. But he's been 15 points or more in like the last six games or something like that. Um, but Adam Thielen, I think I'm done with him. Uh, honestly, I think I'm going to drop him this week. Um, he had I a mean, nice little uh, streak going, yeah. and then all of a sudden he's just sort of disappeared. Yeah, it seems like the Panthers' offense has changed since they fired their head coach, so I don't know where they're going with it. Adam Thielen had a great start to the season, and now he's just not involved as much, so he's probably going to go to my drop. And uh, luckily for me, Devon Achan has returned, and he looked really good last week. Yeah, and I was actually – surprised that he was in your starting lineup because you know he's coming off injury uh a week or so ago re-aggravates the uh the injury mm -hmm. and you're thinking oh man is he is he just done for the season yeah. and so he comes comes back this week and you know the the experts are like well we don't really know how many carries he's going to get blah 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 yeah. and you start him and you get two touchdowns and a nice game from HN and so despite you know, your losses, at least you know you have uh, yeah. a really exciting running back that can help ease that pain a little bit. Yeah, and the reason that I started him was because, because right away on Thursday night football, I, I saw CeeDee Lamb blow up, and I figured Malik's team might have one of those weeks, which he did, yeah. and I said, I'm going to need the most points possible, so I was going to risk it with A-Chan this week. Um, my bench was okay. Cooper Cup got into the end zone, which kind of salvaged him, but... He just hasn't proved anything for me to start him uh, recently. Same with Puka Nakua, who also found the end zone when I benched him. Yeah, uh, he was back to his uh, big big play ways. Yeah. Um, did, I'm curious, when I saw him on your bench, what prompted you to leave Nakua on the bench? Because I know you know he's been up, he's been down, but he's he's been one of the breakout stars of this season. So I was a little surprised to see him on your bench. What was yeah. the reason? Uh, I was nervous. I thought Cleveland's defense was going to show up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, and I just... I couldn't trust the Rams guys. I'd been trusting them the previous weeks, and of course the week I don't trust them, they get into the end zone. <laughs> um, so again, it, it goes without saying that my roster has become quite difficult to figure out. Um, and Jonathan Taylor looks like he might be out for the rest of the season too. Wow. Um, unless, I mean, if they make the playoffs, they'll be in the, the real 
playoffs. Yeah. Um, but for fantasy, it, he might be done for the fantasy season. Mm. So another hit, uh, I'm going to have to hit the waiver wire pretty hard and then figure out what I'm going to do for my starting lineup. Um, the battle for first place was pretty spicy. Uh, Marie took down Sammy, 164 to 134, and she started off huge on Thursday Night Football with Dak Prescott putting up 28 and DK Metcalf exploding for three touchdowns, 134 yards, six catches, 37.4 points. Um, and then Tyler Lockett, he, he was okay. He had 9.7 points, but um, he had a couple nice catches late to get to an okay threshold. But Dak and uh, DK really held it together, put uh, Sammy in the hole really early. You know, it was funny. We were texting during that Seattle game, and sometimes the fantasy gods just smile on you because I don't remember if it was this, uh, Metcalf's first or second touchdown, but uh, Seattle had scored a touchdown. It had come off the board for some reason. I remember if it was a penalty or what. Yep. Then mm -hmm. they sco uh, the next play, they score another touchdown. That came off the board. Yeah. So on the third try, Metcalf gets the touchdown. Mm -hmm. And if you're sitting there watching the game and that's your player, yeah. you gotta you got to – perform a sacrifice or something <laughs> to appease the gods because they are smiling on her right now. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty pretty insane. So right away, I think Sammy was down 70 to nothing after the first <laughs> night, which just is terrible because, you know, most of these Thursday night games haven't been very good. So to get a good one last week uh, was pretty surprising and put up a lot of fantasy points too. Um, and then, like, her other player, like Derrick Henry had two touchdowns, 100 yards. Kamara had two touchdowns with a bunch of catches. Not too many yards because the Lions' defense is pretty good against the run, but what's she just had a lot on, of touchdowns. What's the word on Henry? Because he started out really strong in that game, and then you didn't see much of him at all in the um, second half. He took a bad hit, mm -hmm. and uh, they thought that he was going to be, I, I think at, in the game he was under concussion protocol. Um, so he sat the rest of the game, I believe. Um, but he's already apparently been ruled out of the concussion protocol, so he should be good, good uh, going. Okay. He's going to play mon next Monday night. Um, so that'll be interesting. Um, and then Sammy, funny enough, I noticed Sammy picked up Trey McBride as Marie dropped Trey McBride. He's been fantastic at yeah. tight end. Yeah. So she had to fill in for some bye weeks. So she had to get a kicker and a defense. And like I said, she ran into that issue of not wanting to drop the Buffalo defense or Justin Tucker, the kicker. So she had to make sacrifices. She chose to drop Trey McBride because she has Travis Kelsey, yeah, which, that's which makes sense. It does. Um, but he kind of went off. Luckily, it wasn't enough. And then uh, Sammy got a huge game from Michael Pittman Jr., who I think has been probably my biggest surprise of the entire season. Yeah, you know, uh, you play the uh, the daily fantasy, you know, where yeah. you pick a roster every week. And sometimes you get down to those last few slots you got to fill, and you have a budget, and so you're looking at value players within that, that range. And when I was setting up my roster, I saw Pittman. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, he's a bargain. I threw him in, and he won me that week. Yeah, He had a very nice game. Yeah, it's been surprising. He's been like double-digit catches for so many games this year, and his only lack is touchdowns, I guess. But um, like you're saying, for DFS, he's been, he's been really good, and he stayed at a lower price range almost the whole season, which is shocking. Yeah. Um, Keenan Allen didn't do a whole lot. The Chargers Patriots game. I hope nobody was watching because it was awful. Six to Six zero to final. Nothing. Yeah. yeah. Um, wild stat for you too. Patriots have lost four, four straight games while holding opponents under ten points. Wow. So their defense is yeah. uh, playing, but their offense can't produce. Yeah, they can barely score any points. Wow. Um, and then Sammy got his usual production from uh, Jalen Hurts and AJ Brown. Probably been they've been the best quarterback wide receiver duo. I would say them and maybe Dak and CeeDee Lamb. So that's been pretty solid for him. What's up with Connor on his bench? Yeah, that uh, was... If he's healthy, you start Connor. That was the one thing Sammy did say that he regretted. Um, he want he wishes he would have played Connor. Um, I can kind of see it. Najee Harris was playing good um, the last couple games. James Connor was not himself the last few games since he's come back from injury. Uh, so for him to blow up in this game, not a huge surprise, but I get where Sammy was coming from being a little bit nervous to start him. So, yeah. 
yeah, pretty wild finish. Um, fun matchup for sure. Um, and then we get to you. We'll just go over your team because Drake has exited the building. <laughs> but uh, yep. that's is that three weeks in a row that your team has had like top tier scores, or is this two weeks back to back? Um, I want to say three weeks. Um, one thing that I, I think we talked about this on the last podcast is uh i've been having fun streaming defenses based on matchups mm -hmm. you were just talking about that chargers game uh they were on the waiver wire i picked them up i started them and they shut out the patriots yeah. uh i'll take it man mm -hmm. that made me happy yeah uh i found out that hollywood brown the reason we got a big goose ache from him is uh he had a heel injury mm -hmm. earlier in the game and left the game uh okay. again when you get a entry early in the game and they're done for the rest of the game you're at a disadvantage Got yeah a big old goose egg mm -hmm. um my quarterback controversy i'm not so sure it's a controversy anymore because purdy uh and the niners have been on fire purdy's been outscoring uh mahomes my other quarterback yeah i started the right one this week purdy had a monster game and i've heard People on Sports Talk Radio talking about the Niners uh, being the favorite for the Super Bowl right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so, again, I'm still going to look at matchups, but uh, Purdy, uh, who I uh, drafted as a bi-week fill-in, has, uh, has turned into a very nice uh, number one QB. Yeah. Uh, Debo, my Lord, what a game. That was almost embarrassing mm -hmm. watching him rush a TD and catch a couple of TDs. And yeah. he had one of the best games of his career. He was just outstanding. Yeah, he was another one that while watching, because you and I play that DFS, and a lot of people had played Debo Samuel. I was, For me, I was surprised. I didn't think that many people would play Debo Samuel. I thought more people would go to Ayuk or something. Yeah. Um, so every time I saw Debo headed towards the end zone, I was just... Not happy. Disappointed because <laughs> I didn't pick him. With those two uh, wide receivers, it's like feast or famine. If Ayuk does well, Debo gets single digits. If Debo does well, Ayuk gets single digits. Yeah. So you never know what you're going to get from them. Mm -hmm. uh, Kyron Williams, another solid week for me. One thing that I found interesting is in my other league, uh, I started Royce Freeman, who's the number two guy with the Rams, mm -hmm. thinking he'd get some scraps. He got a goose egg. Yeah. He had like one rush. Yeah. So Kyron got all the work in the backfield. Yeah. That's very exciting for me in this league, not right. so much for the other league. Yeah, it looks like he's finally come back to fully taking that, that workload over. So yeah. he, he could be a fantasy stud for the playoffs. Uh, Dallas tight end Ferguson. Uh, he was a very nice wave warrior pickup for me. Another big game. And, uh, my kicker, uh, McPherson with the Bengals, uh, who played on Monday night, uh, apparently he missed, uh, like a 50 yarder, yeah. uh, that doinked off the, the upright, um, 57, but then he, he I believe. that was the one he missed. Yeah. Uh, but then he hit a 50 yarder later in the game. Mm -hmm. So I ended up with 13 points from him. So. Very, very happy with my team's performance. Um, the Cardinals are on a bye this week, so obviously Hollywood Brown goes to the bench. Uh, Addison returns from the bye with the Vikings. He's going to take that slot. Yeah. And for the most part, my team is going to be at full strength. Now, uh, we'll talk more about next week's games, but really next week for me is, is meaningless because I think all of our playoff spots are locked in. So a, yeah. a win or a loss uh, this upcoming week isn't going to hurt our playoff chances. Yeah, it's mostly for seeding, but lately the the bottom teams have been putting up a lot of points, so I don't know if the seeding's even going to really matter. Um, the only thing that I wanted to ask about your team, though, how do you feel about Jameer Gibbs right now? Because he's kind of struggled a little bit since Montgomery's come back. Um, he's been kind of up and down to say I'm the least. still high on on Gibbs I think he's there's a lot of promise there uh yeah he did give me a single digit game this week but uh I think he's a real talent and uh I think uh I'm going to get more up games than down games from him going forward okay um and then what we where do we have oh man yeah all these games are high scoring uh then we have Tracy's team knocking off Jordan's team which that Basically was what everybody was rooting for because now Jordan misses the playoffs and everybody else is locked in. Um, Tracy had a huge game from Sam Laporta, like tight end record, rookie record. Um, and Nico Collins, wow, 
nine catches, 191 yards, and a touchdown. I really thought because Denver has a solid defense, um, and they have one of the best young cornerbacks in Pat Sertan. I thought he was going to get locked up, and he just blew up, which was incredible. Well, do you think a large part of that was because of Tank Dell going down early? Um, even though, you know, when when the number one guy goes down, that allows the defense to double cover the right. other guy. So it is surprising yeah. that he played that well, but obviously he got fed because Tank Dell wasn't available. Yeah, that's why I think I, I was surprised all around because of the injury, and I would have thought they would have put more attention on him, but... I don't know. I guess I didn't watch that game close enough to understand, but it was a good game for him. And, man, Tracy made all the right choices this week, I would say. Well, her Dallas defense is, like, bipolar. I mean, <laughs> yeah. there are days where they'll score, you know, they'll score touchdowns. They'll have produced uh, double-digit points. And then against Seattle, who I don't know if anyone saw this coming. I saw, you know, earlier in the week prior to uh, last week's games, I like reading those start and sit articles and everyone was saying sit all the Seattle wide receivers. They're not going to perform against this Dallas defense. Yeah. Metcalf three touchdowns. Mm -hmm. Seattle blows up. Dallas ends up with negative one points. That's shocking. So you, yeah. you don't know what you're going to get from Dallas. Mm -hmm. uh, but we did talk to Tracy today a little bit. And at least my logic is that Dallas also can put up the most points of I would think any defense because of the way that they get turnovers yeah. uh, fairly often and get touchdowns out of those turnovers. I think I would just stick with Dallas rather than trying to think too hard on streaming a defense just because they can give you so much. Now, she can come attack me all she wants if in the playoffs Dallas gets a negative game and that loses her <laughs> a matchup. I will take the blame for that, but my thinking would be otherwise. Um, on the other side for Jordan, for his final statement, um, Sam Howell, they, man, they could not move the ball. I think Miami's defense is maybe a little better than people thought. Yeah. Um, Chris and Olave. makes them scary as heck. Yeah. Olave had a good game, um, against the Lions, but no touchdowns. Jalen Waddell has struggled heavily, I would say, for this season. He's had a couple big games. And then this is kind of the problem when you have a, a bunch of good players on bad teams. Brees Hall only put up 10 points. Ramondre Stevenson, he did get hurt. He had been playing really well up until that, yeah. um, but he got hurt by a hip drop tackle. Logan Thomas with the struggling uh, Washington offense, just he didn't get anything going, didn't really leave anything on his bench, just kind of a, a all-around rough end to the yeah, season. Yeah, end to the season. Yeah. So they basically, uh, Drake's team and Jordan's team are eliminated. That mm -hmm. basically leaves eight standing. Again, this upcoming week is kind of meaningless, and yeah. then things get exciting. And I got to say, I mean, right now, uh, Dak Knight and Malik's team uh, look like the uh, the teams to beat. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I think I'm – am I still the eighth seed after all this? Yeah, because um, of the tiebreakers. So I might end up <laughs> facing Dak Knight in the playoffs, which I'm yeah. not real happy about. I was – Kind of hoping someone else can take a crack at her before I have to face <laughs> that juggernaut. But yeah. uh, there's a good possibility I'll be facing them. I don't know. Maybe if, if I get a win this week and, and one of the other teams with a similar record loses, then maybe I'll get the next right. seed, which I'm kind of hoping for. Yeah. So there's there's motivation to win right there. Yeah. Um, the last matchup that we have, Becky's team beat Ian's team, which solidified Becky into the playoffs as well. She's got put up 129 to 111. Uh, the the two stories here, Miami did their thing for Becky, Tua, and Tyreek. Wow, and what a Tyreek, game had. Tyreek only played like through the third quarter or something. Like he didn't even have to play towards the end of the game. Same with Tua. He got benched late in the game for Mike White. Um, and then for Ian, mm. the thing that stunk for him is Justin Herbert and Austin Eckler have been struggling the last couple of weeks. It just seems like the Chargers are in a a weird spot with their offense right now, and they yeah. can't they can't do a whole lot. And that's kind of what uh, gets Ian's team clicking. Um, yeah, that's weird because Chargers have always been known for being able to to strike quick. Yeah, and uh, the fact that they were only able to muster six points this week was a bit of a shocker. Yeah, and then even uh, Amon Ross St. Brown, he only had two catches, which is crazy. And a touchdown. Yeah, um, that saved the day there. Yeah. So, uh, unfortunate 
for Ian, but I think his team is still dangerous heading into the playoffs. You know, watching uh, the Miami game, Tyreek's second touchdown basically looked like a replay of his first touchdown. And you sit there and marvel at his talent and go, how does he get that open that yeah. fast downfield to just take the, the pass in stride and go into the end zone? The, the guy, I think he's already clinched his spot in Canton. I, I think he's yeah. a Hall of Famer and uh, he could lead this team to a, a, a Super Bowl. And that would be really fascinating to see. Yeah. I, and outside of quarterbacks, he's one of the top uh, projected MVP winners for the regular season. Yeah. Um, which I think he, he has a good chance if he can if he can get to that 2,000 yards that he's talking about. Yeah. Um, really briefly for any waiver wire stuff, there is two teams on a bye. Uh, it's Arizona and Washington. So nothing crazy. Um, but if you just need to fill in for injuries and things, ton of quarterback options if you need to. Um, and then for anything else, we have the Green Bay wide receivers, Romeo Dobbs and Christian Watson. Christian Watson, I haven't heard any injury updates, but at one point they were saying it's not as serious as they thought, so maybe he could play this week because uh, they do play on Monday night, so there's a chance there. But it would be a little bit risky to wait until Monday night, so I'm, I'm debating whether or not I want to put in a claim for Christian Watson. Mm-hmm. Um, if you need running back help, Chuba Hubbard, maybe. New Orleans is kind of a tough matchup, but... Uh, he looks like he's taking over the lead running back spot for Carolina. Um, Ezekiel Elliott, another running back option that you could go for um, with Ramondre Stevenson now being out. I don't know if I want to fully be tied to New England, but like for me, I, it's, that's another guy that I'm thinking of because I, I don't have too many other choices. So yeah, I do have enough running back depth still, but if another injury occurs, I hate to say that, um, then I m- might be in trouble. Charbonnet got hurt this past week didn't he uh yeah any uh, talk on how serious that injury is so he hurt his knee and head coach pete carroll had said that it uh swelled up pretty badly um but it sounds like ken walker is also still has his nagging oblique injury um so that stuff's kind of up in the air so realistically maybe charbonnet uh if we get better updates as the week goes along Otherwise, their third string running back is DJ Dallas. I don't know if I want to trust a third string running back, but again, if you become in in dire need, there's there's possibilities. There's an interesting name that jumps out at me on this uh, waiver wire, and that's a guy who I drafted, Damian Pierce. Mm. You know, I got really frustrated with him, uh, traded him away, I believe. But if I didn't trade him away, I probably would have flat out cut him. I heard a lot of experts say he's just not even startable right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Singletary came in and was playing, outplaying Pierce. Uh, I mean, Pierce was hurt for a few games. Yeah. But now Pierce scores a touchdown this past week. Is he back to being the number one guy? Is that someone you want to look at if you're in desperate need of a running back? Yeah, it would somebody definitely be somebody I would look at, especially maybe ahead of some of those other, like, fringe guys just because the Houston offense has been proven to be good this year um, that I might, I might take a look at uh, Damian Pierce. Let me look at the other thing I would say too, is if you're going to make any waiver wire moves, start looking at their playoff schedule, right? Because that's when things like that can matter. Normally, you know, you want to play your studs and your stuff when, you know, whenever, and you still want to stick to that. But when you're looking at those, those secondary guys, you can start looking at matchups. Um, They have, Houston has the Jets this week to end the season, which is a good matchup. Then they have Tennessee, Cleveland, and Tennessee. Mm. Now, if this was weeks ago, I would have said, no way, I'm staying far, far away with a 10-foot pole from those matchups. Tennessee's looked a little more vulnerable on the ground, and yeah. same with Cleveland. So I, I I would say I'd be a little nervous, but you know, depending on how much work Damian Pierce gets this week, he may be somebody to look at. So. Mm. Yeah, but other than that, like I said, shouldn't be too many waiver situations that you'll need. Maybe a couple fill-ins, or maybe you want to solidify your bench for the playoffs. That's a possibility. Yeah. Um, Now looking to the final week of the season, like we said, um, week 14 doesn't matter as far as anybody making the playoffs, um, but it can affect seeding pretty heavily. There's a lot of close places. Um, Marie's still in first. Uh, the only way that she'll lose first place is, I believe, if Sammy or Tracy win, they also have to have 
a pretty big game to pass Marie um, in the tiebreaker. But if she wins, she'll outright take the uh, regular season victory. Um, I'm also kind of right there, but I'm limping in with the two losses in fourth. Ian has the same record as me. And then there's Malik, Becky, and Joe. And you guys are all at six and seven. So between the three of you, you can only change uh, your positions between those three. So you guys are locked into those bottom three spots. But it, it might matter uh, where you guys end up landing. You know, it would be crazy. It could be interesting. All right, so if I stay in the eighth seed, I face Deck Knight, which is terrifying. Mm -hmm. uh, if I get a win and one of the other teams with the same record gets a loss, if I move up a spot, I'm now facing Green Buckeye, who I believe beat me twice during the regular <laughs> season. Yeah. And if I move up another spot somehow, uh, let's say the other two teams lose and I get a win, uh, I'm playing Tracy this week. I could be facing her again mm -hmm. in the playoffs. So yeah. that's going to be interesting. But, uh, yeah, those those top couple of teams are teams I would like to avoid in round one. But yeah, uh, it's I'm going to be facing one of those top three teams in the playoffs, and mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of terrifying. Yeah, and the thing that stinks for me as well is because I have the same record as Sammy and Tracy, but I'm way behind in points because my team has been struggling the last few weeks, to say the least. That uh, if by chance I have to play Becky in the first round of the playoffs, that is the one team I've said all season long that I don't want to play in the first round of the playoffs. And that might be where I end up <laughs> end up landing. Um, the other dangerous team that we've talked about is Malik's team, um, which one of these big record teams, me, Tracy, Sammy, could face Malik in the first round of the playoffs. Another scary matchup that I don't really want to face. Um, I I don't know if you noticed this, but if you do face face uh, halftime honeybees, she's got a three game win streak. Going yeah, right that's that's what I was gonna mention. Is the bottom three teams, you Malik and Becky, all are on win streaks now. Malik's yeah. only one one week, but yeah, um, you guys are all the teams that are streaking right now, which is terrifying for those top teams who are kind of struggling a little bit. Yeah, which is is wild. Um, so week fourteen, I'm playing Marie which is going to be wild for this Sunday in our house. Um, I'm also playing her in my ESPN league. Uh -oh. So both of us in our ESPN league, we are um, the top two teams. So we're kind of battling for bragging rights, even though she, I think, has the outright lead already in ESPN. Um, and then in this one, I'm hoping to maybe knock her down a peg, but we'll see. She's she might beat me in both leagues. To win right now. Yeah, I... I have a quarterback issue because I do have Kyler Murray, who is on bye this week. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to have to to fix that situation. And then I believe because once waivers – oh, no, I did set my lineup outside of that. So, yeah, I'm just missing a quarterback for my projection. So hopefully my projection will be a little bit closer uh, come the start of the week. But, um, yeah, I, I'm nervous about my team because I don't know what I'm going to do with my lineup. <laughs> um, Malik gets the free pass this week against Drake's team. Um, although Drake, I don't think has anybody on by, so there is that potential weirdness that could happen. Yeah. He does have his one, uh, IR player that's on the bench. Oh, he does have Curtis Samuel. So he has two zeros. Uh, so it would be pretty hard for him to, to get in, but hmm. maybe you never know with Drake's team <laughs> sometimes. Um, and then what do we have? You're playing Tracy's team, which is a pretty, pretty big close. seating. Yeah, that, and that's a pretty big seating matchup. Yeah. Do you guys have? Do both of them? You guys have your lineup set right now? Uh, I, I think I have a wa waiver wire request in, but uh, right now my team is pretty much locked. If I do get my waiver wire request, I'll make a little tweak. But uh, that's pretty much who I'm going to be going with. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, that's a that's a close matchup. Um, and then. Man, Sammy's team is projected for 125 points. That's one of the higher projections that I've yeah. seen in a while um, against uh, Becky's 114 projected. Looks like both of their lineups are set and ready to go. The only thing I would say is maybe watch out for DeAndre Swift because he was banged up at the end of the last game. But um, Tyreek and Tua are playing on Monday night. So once again, Sammy is in a situation where he's going to have to wait till Monday night to know the outcome of his matchup. And that has not been too friendly to him recently. Um, although he does have 
the Eagles are in Sunday night against Dallas, so that should be fun too. Yeah, I was noticing there's some really great matchups. You know, as I look at my quarterback controversy, I have Purdy facing uh, Seattle right now, but I also have Mahomes facing Buffalo, mm. and that could be the game of the week. That should be pretty darn entertaining to see those two teams go head to head. So there's some there's some fun matchups this week. Yeah. Um, and then Ian versus Jordan. I don't know if Jordan's going to set his lineup or not, if he's going to try to play spoiler to the seedings or not. I, I haven't heard yet. Um, and then Ian only has one person that's injured. Christian Kirk did uh, get knocked out in the last game on Monday night. Mm. And it sounds like he's going to miss a little bit of time. So Ian is going to have to replace him. But he's got plenty of bench options uh, to figure out. So. Yeah. All right, so here we go. Last week of the regular season. Yeah, and I would say, like we said, with, with the playoffs being locked in, this week is basically find out what your team is doing, like who's who you're going to play in the playoffs. It's a good litmus test to see what your team may be capable of going into the playoffs. Yeah, you want to take momentum going into the playoffs. So I would, if I win this week, that keeps my streak going and that – makes me hopeful for the first round of the playoffs. So we'll see. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be crazy. I think, um, so lots of seating things this week. A lot of those middle teams where I'm at the eight and fives, and then you guys down in the six and sevens, um, it could make, make or break your fantasy playoffs. I don't know, but at the end of the game, at the end of the day, just have to win one game and advance and hope for the best. Yep. But, uh, like we always say, get in your waiver claims. If you need them, make any roster adjustments and good luck in week 14 and prep for the playoffs.